that that tugged your heart in different directions, mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. and forth. But nonetheless, here we are. Lima has fought his way back after getting upset by Iceless earlier. All the way up to Losers Finals, we've seen him make big Losers runs like this before, yeah. right? That's the kind of competitor spirit that he's got. And going up against Spark, who made it all the way to Winners Finals, did drop to Johnny in a 3-1 set, but now is here to try to get that run back in Grand Finals. Should he take down Lima? Should he? I mean, it is a tall ask. I love Spark as a player, and I know that knowledge is there, but Lima's gameplay is so overwhelming, you have to be a different beast when you go up against him. Now, from what I... The only thing that I can think of when I think of Spark versus Lima, there, there are two things, actually. One is that Roy is top 20, and the other <laughs> is that Roy versus Bay was 50-50. But also, the last time I talked about it, that kind of thing happened. Lima's rather good. Lima is rather talented, skilled at this game even, if you would say. And putting Spark in a nasty blender, but Spark fighting his way out, still can't manage to find something solid. And the parry there from Lima on the landing up air probably would have been a little bit too late to get it normally, but Spark actually missed the front of it, ended oh. up hitting with the backside, and Lima calling out a lot of these empty jumps from Spark too. It was jumpless. That, that's which time versus the, the Roy up B right now is a thorn in Spark's side. Mm -hmm. and, and just the way that Lima has been moving around the, the oh, nice. He tried just, to call it the side B. Exactly, yeah. and that's right what I'm about to say. The way that Lima is moving around the stage right now is making Spark swing where he thinks Lima is going to be, and Lima is almost never there. Mm -hmm. And that's what Spark does, right, is that he's always trying to stay a couple steps ahead of you, right, mix up timing as well. That's normally something that's big in his game plan, but that can be not as effective as you hope against Bayonetta because she's got the big burst range and everything. Right. And messing up your timing one time means big damage, combo, edge guard, kill, whatever you have it uh, coming from Bayonetta. This is actually a huge opportunity from Spark. Given that he's at 178, it's going to be tough for Lima to get any confirms, right? He's got to fish for, like, jab, grab, some kind of random something. Whereas Spark is like, I, I throw out a side beam, you might die. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Well, but he could have decked that, though. Uh, he could have. You're right. I, <laughs> where, where are you at? Where that are was, you at? That was big for Spark. I mean, he had the lead there for a minute. Even the Lima got off to that hot start. Dead even game now. And now, Yeah, exactly. If you make the last stock even, who cares about the lead you had in the beginning? Who's clutching out this? Oh! <laughs> This is when you can tell that Spark is feeling himself, that like he would have like a guaranteed like, okay, one more hit and then my combo's done. But he's going for big extensions on Reed! Spark is crazy. In fuego. Spark is wild. Look, I said I enjoy Spark's gameplay and there might have been doubters out there. But that boy is hot. That boy he's is nice. crispy. And uh, like you said earlier, you can tell when someone's feeling themselves because they're looking for those moments. Like, you won't air dodge here. You won't roll here. You won't ABK here. And then it and only then takes one. It only takes one. And then they do it. And then they do it. Then they do the dummy. And to, to get a read on somebody like Lima, too, right, who's warmed up, right, he's, he's playing with his brain activated, and yet you're still getting in his head. That's huge. Spark up 1-0 on Lima as game two goes to Battlefield, which is definitely going to make it a whole lot harder for Spark to continue to control the presence when he is hitting Lima, right? He's not gonna be able to go for those crazy mix-up, those crazy reads, because Bayonetta's, even though Roy's pretty mobile on this stage, Bayonetta can just take advantage of these platforms right. crazy good. Right, right. The extensions and what she gets off Ooh. of the... Lots off of the platforms is definitely, I think, a little bit more volatile than what Roy does with the platforms. You and Neighbor were talking about this earlier, that Lima has been making use of this stage to get those like forward airs off the top and such. Mm -hmm. The, the, the fact that Battlefield extension. is open, oh my goodness. Right. Well, you don't normally think about that when you're playing against, like, Lima. You know, like, you think, like, oh, I've got to beat Lima, but you're not necessarily thinking, like, well, what this platform helps Bayonetta do. You know, you're thinking yeah. about like, well, Lima's doing this in neutral and, and don't get comboed and don't get hit by, you know, ABK or you know, things like that, right? But we never think about like, well, maybe I shouldn't let her go to the platform stage. Yeah. Maybe she does get some crazy extensions here. Lima, same sequence off the ledge that time, but Spark Ooh. not ready for the double. 
and then getting the kill with the down air too. That was like the reverse read, where Spark waited yeah. for the for the stall and fall, but it wasn't an air dodge. It was the down air, and the down air beat out Spark's weight. That's big. I love I love Smash or fighting games in general when those moments happen. You can really see into the minds of the players while they're playing, like what they're valuing, what's good, mm. what's bad, what's punishable. Well, and especially when they are evaluating the other player too. I think that we've seen Limo. No. No. Show some really good knowledge of the way that Spark himself plays, taking that data from game one, transferring it into a big win in game two, and hey, you know what? It may have been five or so years ago, but as it turns out, Spark was right. Roy Bayo is 50-50. <laughs> it's one-to-one -one right now. Bayo 50-50, dude. I would call that matchup one-to-one. -one. You know what? I need empirical data, and that's that's that right there. 50-50. And, and Roy is top 20. As it turns out, Spark was just five years ahead of us. How do they do it, man? The the prophets of our age, they just know things before we do. And it's got him into top eight of this shockwave. I mean, was deep it into it too. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's something we don't see a lot from Spark. And Spark is a regular, you know, attendee. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be here, but mm. normally Spark might, you know, see a run fizzle out around the ninth area. But my man's in losers finals. This is one one with Lima. This is so far a defining performance of his career. And I love sure. to see. It. And right now, you know, taking Lima to Northern Cave. Definitely you're in danger of dying to Bayo combos off the side, but the same goes against Roy because you get plenty of that here. Right, right. And we were talking earlier, I like you said, you were listening to that conversation, where this might be a good stage to take Bayonetta because you still get the opportunity to use the platforms on the ledge or near the ledges. But for her combo progression, it may not be the same. That's not necessarily where she's starting her combos. Uh, so she doesn't mm -hmm. get very much off those platforms. And also, how long is she going to be able to extend them if she's starting them off of you being exactly. up on those platforms? And look at this, Spark is just playing under them too because he knows how big of an opportunity that can be for him. Yeah. Deep by Lima, oh, though, that'll do it. very nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent positioning. We've got the Witch Twist right where Spark needed to be. I'm yeah, the Sage this. definitely, I think, puts small differences in how Lima can approach and even the combo trees that they're going to go for, mm -hmm. which then, in turn, affects the survivability of the opponent. Oh, Yidna won't be surviving off of this, though. Lima, oh, so High close. Recovery. That's actually, you know, normally Lima has been uh, kind of a step ahead of Spark in that he knows that Spark is not the kind of, like, Spark is the kind of person who will think, okay, I hit you with this this time, mm -hmm. so you're not, you're going to respect that next time. Right, because you're right. a good enough player. And Lima has taken advantage of that by going, okay, that, wow, it knew panic the roll, roll was coming. Panic roll. Yeah. Bear, big panic roll. Oh, crap, the Bayonetta's coming. Right. Except she's not. <laughs> but the side B evens the game up one stock apiece. The saving grace right now in Spark's toolkit. That side B, once again, bailing him miss. out of another situation. Oh. Roll in, but that actually works out really well for yeah. him. Yeah. Got the shield out in time and then was able to get back to center stage at least for a bit, but committal on the nair, even with the full drift, Lima was able to get the witch twist. That is what Spark was looking for on that last nair. Mm -hmm. Get just far enough away that that witch twist won't hit out of shield. Mm -hmm. Oh, Spark trying to punish something that was not, he wasn't in the position for, and now you see him scrambling, trying to get back to the stage. He is, he is panicking a little bit, and the, the, the panic side B off the ledge, it worked that time, but oh, he had to get a big play to win that game, and he got it. Oh my goodness, I didn't <laughs> think he was going to get there in time either. Whoa. I thought there was no way, and he's lightning quick. Spark is so explosive when it comes to the side B. Like, I, when I think about our other Roy's, Cheeks, you know, of course, um, and Johnny, like, we see them side B, but when Spark does it, there's something, like, just a little unhinged about it. It's like, <laughs> like, darn it, you, like, you would do side B there? Like, that's where you would do it? Like, why were you ready for that? I, Johnny and Cheeks are a bit cheese-averse. They, they have some sort of personal pride staked on not selling out for the cheese. Spark has no such inhibitors. Mm -hmm. He he says, look, if I'm going to win a game, I'm going to do it. I'm a true competitor. I know how to use this side B, and I'm going to consistently catch you on these bad landings on the side of the stage and get the KO for it. But right now, game four, PS2, 
is where Lima has taken Spark to try to keep the set alive. So far, it's working out nicely. I think this is a great stage for Bayonetta. Once again, I, today has just been the, the noticing of how powerful platforms are for this character. Mm -hmm. And these set up right here are literally perfect. If not, you know, Battlefield's probably the best one, but these are second to none. Kills well, off of those I platforms. I guess they would be second to Battlefield. Is how goes. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it, it, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Livia's got plenty of setups available on the stage. Didn't even need to use a whole lot of them, though, because it's just been, okay, I've got a wide track of stage, so I can combo you for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have the platforms to extend those, and it's just been about damage, damage, damage. Wait for you to make a mistake, and then I get my KO. Exactly. And Spark definitely, I mean, holding mm. forward a bit too much, and no jump. It uh, It's starting to look like a game five. Game five, baby. I would definitely put this in the game five category. So I, Spark's already thinking about, like, whatever is going on in the next game. I know Spark's not thinking about this game, for sure. Uh, no. But definitely recognizing maybe the habits that got him into this position. And he's going to, you know, play around, look for some data. That's just kind of the player Spark is. Spark is a thinker. Yeah, for he, sure. If you give him an opportunity to take some time to think about things, think about what to adjust, yeah. he's going to take big advantage of that. That was a crazy... Yeah, Spark is Spark is a smash scientist, if you will. Yes, he, he's he willing, is in the lab. He's willing to risk it for the data. He's willing to analyze that data. He's willing to think about the future, you know, what what's better. How do I compound a, uh, against this? How do I optimize these things? Um, which are all great things that you need against Lima, but doing that mid-set on game five, will that make him hesitant, you know? Like, and that's, will that stop him from clutching? That's what we've seen in this bracket as well, is that when Spark is playing well, it is when there is no hesitation. It is when he is simply in the zone and ready to snap react instantly. You're spitting. Three, game five two, to Smashville. One, this is gonna be a doozy. This is, this is going to be a, a Lollapalooza, as they say. They're going to be throwing haymakers on the stage, and it will not take long to get the result of our winner. Lima has, of course, been very far in these brackets before, but for Spark to make it to Grand Finals at a Shockwave for the first time ever, it's what he's looking for, and some great SDI in that combo keeps this stock alive, but the question is, for how long? Just barely getting out of that last combo. No punish on the lag, though, I would... Spark wasn't sure how much Lima had. It's an opportunity to start building that momentum back, definitely getting the percent back in their favor. At 123, Lima just needs that one raw tag. That back air was almost it. Didn't find it off of the side B, though. And look at the Spark not even trying to get aggressive with these ledge traps. He went for the up smash. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's not trying to get aggressive here. He just wants to wait for a mistake from Lima, but none happening right there. First blood going to the Bayo. Oh, <laughs> the idea was there from Spark, but no punish. Oops. At least a substantial one quite yet. Tack cancel, not there. Miss. Opportunity still present for Spark, though. The stage is all behind him. Lima's got to make a move. You can almost rest assured that Spark at that moment was going to wait for Lima to get to ledge and look for something other than the grab because he's the kind of person who subscribes to that. I'm not going to do the same thing three times in a row. Right. Right, too predictable, but... That time, Lima mixed up the recovery to get back on stage. That's why he's holding on to this stock, is because he's chosen great spots to get aggressive like that right there. And I don't think Spark is respecting the spaces that Lima can burst from. Mm -hmm. Normally, you see the stage as the end of your options, but Bayonetta is an aerial character and has a lot of these options to spare. No stage needed. Ooh, but the sour spot up air into the up tilt to take the stock on the platform Really nice recognition in the moment. And look, we've seen some explosive stocks from Spark tonight. Can he get one to even up this game? He's got to get out of this combo first. Very strange. Maybe the down SDI, either way. Got an opportunity, oh, no jump. but Lima going for the low recovery option. Spark very smartly going for the high one. Now trying to get this stock, take it to the stock, stock moment, but is that moment gonna happen? Ooh. Will Lima even let it happen? He's trying to catch some kind of panic option to send this to last stock. But Spark with his own panic up B right there does another one. It works out, drags the Bayonetta upwards. Down tilt maybe giving Lima that opportunity to close out this game with the Roy off stage. He's done a great job of shutting him down, but Man. some of the recoveries from Spark have been just as good too. Absolutely wild with the recoveries, I agree. Can we get wild with a stock confirmed though? Trying, 
very good patience. Lima's just flying around the stage, doesn't want to land. The LZ is hot. <laughs> you need to take care oh! of the AA first. 127 on the Roid. This only takes like a raw back air, a witch time will set up for a smash attack, but we have a last stock situation. Now he is sitting at 127. So jab, F he smash. He knew that was coming. His <laughs> spark knew that was coming without jab, a doubt. Jab, F smash, F throw, back air. They're all on the witch time, witch twist. Oh, hello, lots of damage. That was the ballsiest counter of all time, and that second one even more so. Be careful with that. Oof. Oh, the forward smash yeah. whiffs, and it's a sweet spot back here. It goes down to last stock, but Lima does clutch it out, stops the Cinderella run from Spark Cold at third place. Give it what up. a set that was, though. Give it up. Give it up. Give, give it up. up. That's give my boy. It give it up. Look, I, I, I give Spark a good ribbon on commentary sometimes. You all need to know that Spark is, like, one of my best, one of my besties in this entire community. To see him play this well all night tonight, take Lima to game five, somebody who is certainly extremely experienced against Roy in particular.